Hello everyone, welcome to How to Land on the Moon with the N1. This is of course the Soviet Union's attempt to launch cosmonauts to the moon for a lunar landing and recover them safely. It never actually carried cosmonauts because it kept exploding on tests, but it was an impressive rocket to be sure, and a complicated one, so it bears talking about a little bit how to actually use it and get to the moon. First thing, of course, you will want KSC Switcher to switch your uh, KSC location to Baikonur. Your launch location should be Baikonur uh, for this rocket. And you're launching to uh, inclination of 51 degrees. This mod is Raider Nix, uh, is from Raider Nix Soviet Rockets Pack. And if you get the Realism Overhaul mod, um, in the Realism Overhaul folder, uh, in the Ships folder, outside game data, there's the craft file for this. And that's important because it's really hard to put together far more parts than your Saturn V rocket, and if only because it's got 30 engines at the bottom, of course. But you really want to make sure that you don't forget anything. We'll go through the parts here, but even if I was going to try and put it together, I'd probably forget something. So uh, probably best that I don't try to do it on the fly here. Uh, we've got the launch escape system. And I expect that most things will be searchable if you type in N1. Uh, there aren't a whole lot of other options in that case. So here we have the blockade. That's the first stage, the first and second stage, inner stage, second stage, second to third stage, inner stage. Um, the block D is, we'll talk about that. <laughs> that's uh, further on up. There's a lot of blocks there. These are all these stages. And uh, we'll go through them as I pull it apart. Uh, so, but it's actually not all the parts are here, obviously. The spacecraft isn't. The spacecraft is going to be part of the Soviet spacecraft pack from Raider Nick. And, okay, so let's take off the launch escape system. We have these huge fairings on it. They're all the way here, and they only come off when they need to, which means in orbit. And uh, this is the transfer stage to the moon, the block G. And then the block D is the one that gets them into orbit around the moon and also starts the descent of the lander stage. The lander is tucked in here. Okay, let me just go from top to bottom. So we've got the two fairing pieces. And then we've got this orbital module. And it looks like this uh, pack up here is included. So that's good. Uh, we've got the descent module here, and we've also got the descent module parachute, remember that separately. And it's got antennae, descent mode, and I think you have to remove the shroud before deploying the parachute. We'll have to check uh, when we get to that phase. And then this is the special service module for this mission. That's a 7K LOK service module. It's different from your normal Soyuz uh, service module because it's got fuel cells and more um, Delta V. So you're going to need that. It's still a pretty tight margin, so watch out. Now, all of these have their own RCS, and if you really want, uh, probably you don't need the descent module RCS activated until descent. It doesn't have a whole lot of fuel in there. Uh, potassium superoxide is the CO2 scrubbing material here, and otherwise everything else is pretty self-explanatory. So activating RCS on the orbital module and the service module should allow for a good docking. And uh, of course, it's going to do a lunar orbit rendezvous as did, um, as did Apollo, but the crew will have, well, the one cosmonaut that actually lands is going to have the EVA to transfer through technically. Um, this version of Soyuz did not have a hatchway that uh, cosmonauts could pass through. So we have these fairings around the lander the LK fairing, and that's that one right there. And so two of those are mounted on the top of this block D shroud top. You can you can begin to see why this is going to get complicated. Uh, let's just uh, clear out. This is the service module. There's no other parts on here, I think, that we haven't already mentioned. I think that uh, says it all. I don't think there's a separate... Uh, that all comes with that, so yeah. Okay, even I have to sort of keep in mind how this all fits together. And notice the, the offset node here to keep balance. That's very interesting. Anyway, uh, so the lander, let's take this apart. We've got a lander module here, and then at the bottom of it, 
it's got a separate leg module. So this is basically the ascent module and it's got an RD this this engine assembly which is it's got four verniers, uh, two supplementary engines and then one core engine there and it's all called the RD858 and uh, it's got uh, 12 ignitions it looks like. Oh wait, uh, maybe I didn't. Hold on. Uh, maybe no, oh, these come off. Okay. Oh god, these come off too. See what I mean? Okay, so what would happen is this RD858 goes like this. Oh jeez. Uh okay, up uh, 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 there. <laughs> See, this is why you want to use the craft files. These two are separate. Okay. And these are the RD eight five nines and then there's the vernier assembly here um, I don't think that's on the right node that's that's the right node and those are the RD858 verniers they have 12 ignitions this has 12 ignitions and then these outside ones only have two you probably won't need those those are supplementary engines in case the center one doesn't work and probably will okay and then the landing leg assembly which gets ditched and provides a platform for launch but basically uh, it's got a little bit of extra fuel and that's to finish off the descent but most of the descent is handled by the block D actually so it'll use the block D to do most of its descent and then just for the last bit it'll use the fuel in these landing legs and then ditch that stuff when it ascends and then all of this fuel here that you have in here uh, will be used for the ascent from the moon and again, we'll see all that, but that's what this is all about. Eek. Okay, hopefully that all works right. Again, please use the craft file. Okay, so we have that. Okay, so this was the LK, the lander shroud. And then here, you gotta pull off this block G. And then this bit is the block D shroud top. Oh, that bit is the shroud top. This is the shroud. Uh, I'm gonna have to pick it up somehow. Shroud bottom, okay. We've got a shroud top and a shroud bottom. Let's just leave it there. This is the block D. The block D has RCS, thankfully, and four ignitions, so be careful. You have to use one ignition to get into orbit around the moon. You're going to have to use one ignition to uh, probably start descent off and then probably one ignition to do the main descent burn. So you have one spare after that for maybe a mid-course adjustment after the block G gets finished. So be careful. But it's got RCS thrusters all over the place. It's a nice efficient engine uh, for a kerosene engine that is. Remember they didn't use hydrogen and oxygen at any point. So be careful. And but besides the block D itself, you have this LKD coupler. Okay, so then I won't put the fairings back on. Oh God. Oh, so remember to have hangar extender. It's not going to be possible to even manipulate this rocket without that. This is the block G. The engine is the NK19-31, the current configuration is NK19, NK31 was for like an upgraded version of the N1. And uh, this is the transfer stage, so that's all it does. And I believe it only has one ignition, one ignition. So be careful of that of course. The rest of the rocket is what actually gets it to orbit. It doesn't do anything else. Um, here we have the decoupler for the V slash G interstage. And the big fairings get mounted, I think, at the top of this stage, the block V. So the big fairings go like that and encompass all of this. And if it did need to do the launch escape, these guys would have to pull off quite a lot of stuff. Quite a heavy load to yank off of the rest of the rocket. Anyway, so block V features, and of course this is the inner stage, features four of the NK-21 engines. So not the NK-19 up here, that's a different one. They're all kerosene and oxygen. This is the NK-21 now. 
and four of those. And then the next stage is eight NK15Vs. And this is on the NK15V configuration. And then the inner stage, and that's called the block B. And then the block A has the 30 NK15 engines. The grid fins come with the stage. They should be deployed uh, when you launch. I believe they are on an action group already in the craft file. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't even want to use those. Okay. Uh, it's uh, the last action group, uh, block A grid fins. I'm doing this in 1.3.1, but the files are all compatible with 1.6 and 1.7, I believe, but definitely 1.6. So you should be able to do it in those versions as well. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. So, yeah. I think that covers all the parts on this. So, lest I make any mistakes, I am going to reload the craft file and we will launch it. Now, in terms of launch windows, I have no idea exactly what they planned. If you're going to do a flyby of the moon and you need a free return to get back, you have to go into sort of a polar around the moon situation. Uh, so that's annoying to actually land and return from. But, I mean, of course, if you got a free return, it doesn't matter. I recommend just going for uh, the easy way in this case and uh, going there uh, as low an inclination as possible. So we are going to time warp. There's going to be tremendous lag with this rocket. We'll see how bad it is. But you can see the relative inclination. I've targeted the moon, of course. And we could get it down to a fairly good number, like 17 degrees. But then on launch, we are going to we are going to see uh, it go to a higher inclination, right? It has to go to 51 degrees to avoid China, basically. It can't go straight out from Baikonur. Now, if I was manually launching this, um, I could shade that a little bit. But anyway, let's see. I'll let, I'll let KOS do it, and we'll see if my launch script still works properly. If it doesn't, I'll launch it manually afterwards. But KOS is better on timing everything like the hot staging. Okay, we have a launch script in there and I'll do it properly. So we'll say 51.4 degrees or something like that. And the first stage does have a tremendous thrust to weight ratio. We will see that at work. Here we go. Now, notice it deployed the grid fins. And we're waiting for release. Ooh. Well, that was not nominal. Well, okay. It probably did happen at least once. I think I'll just launch it manually. I think there's something wrong with, uh... oh, it's stage under thrust. Okay, that's, no, no, that's probably not. Mm, I'll just, I'll just do it manually. It's fine. It's probably for the best. Okay, so here we go manually. SAS on, throttle is up, and get ready for lag. Ignition. launch, I think. I don't know why KOS didn't work out. Anyway, press zero for the grid fins. I probably should have done that right away. Okay, it's gonna be serious on the frame rates. Our smoke screen is set to 10,000 particles. I think the default is 1,000, but with 30 engines, that's not all that, all that great. So we'll take the slideshow for the time being. Now, if we want to get to uh, higher inclination, 70, uh, sorry, 51 degrees or so, uh, I think uh, maybe 65 degree heading is appropriate. It's got a lot of acceleration, 
but watch out for the aerodynamics because practically every surface on this is being hit by the airstream unlike with the Saturn V where it really is just the upper portion and that's why the Griffins are sort of there I would probably turn faster with the Saturn V than with this the thrust weight ratio for the first and second stages are pretty high the third stage takes a while though it's about six minutes and it starts off with a thrust weight ratio of 0.6 so gotta be prepared for that sorry we're launching at night uh, obviously I figured that that was the best time with the relative inclination though maybe since we're going to be increasing our inclination the timing should have been at a different time such that you know our relative inclination wouldn't change by as much right now just by increasing our inclination to 51 degrees which is about a six degree difference our relative inclination has got to change by much more than that so anyway launch timing is going to be complicated for Baikonur from Cape Canaveral it's relatively easy you can do all sorts of fancy stuff like determining when you want to launch with respect to the sun angle at the landing site imagine that's a little bit more complicated for missions out of Baikonur uh, we are we're tilting too much say aerodynamics gotta be careful uh, it's, it's okay. sort of counter pitch it from the way it wants to go right now probably should have been closer to prograde the whole time The lag does not help in this situation because it takes me time to figure out what exactly it's doing. If you want to throttle down as you pass through max Q, that's an option. The engines do throttle. In fact, that's how they steered actually, uh, differential throttling. I don't believe they get both. But we don't have a very effective differential throttling system in Kerbal Space Program right now. I know about the mod. I don't necessarily recommend it with a system this complicated where the throttle ranges aren't from 0 to 100 and there are 30 engines and stuff like that. Don't know how much I want to see Crawl control avionics or anything like that, try and handle this. Well, the thrust weight ratio is getting up there, the acceleration is pretty high, so I'm gonna throw down to limit G forces. Probably also vibrations, right? Since uh, this stage had a bad habit of shaking itself to pieces. This uh, rocket has quite a lot of extra delta V on the first three stages. So, you know, we could do all sorts of interesting maneuvers like after the dog leg turn back or something. I don't know. It's a little bit tough in the dark to see uh, what exactly we, strictly speaking, need to avoid China. There's also plenty of leeway on, you know, having a slow turn or an inefficient turn. After all, they were expecting to lose a few of these engines. A certain percentage of these engines were expected to uh, just fail on them. Which is why I had the huge thrust to weight ratio at the start and 30 engines in the first place. So I'm going to hold it at a 20 degree pitch here. Again, ultimately we're going to need uh, 6 minutes for this stage, the block V, to finish its burn. So this is very different from the situation with the Saturn V and the third stage didn't burn for that much time. The second stage was 6 minutes long. But that stage had a higher thrust-to-weight ratio than this third stage. 
still I'm keeping the oh and I should hot stage now. Probably should have hot staged a second earlier, but technically it is more efficient. Still I was keeping the time to wap wapses to about a minute and 40, 45 seconds on the first stage. Note that the launch escape system isn't staged yet. They hang on to it for an extended period of time. I'm probably going to just uh, carry it all the way to orbit. I don't think that that's too much different from what they were planning. Uh, I just noticed that the side fairings actually come in two pieces. I forgot about that. There's the shroud bottom and the shroud top. I pulled them off of the stage as if they were one big piece, but they're actually two big pieces. And heavy. They're very heavy. Still, we've got plenty of Delta V. And that's mainly because the payload itself is much lighter than that for the Saturn V. And we're only landing one Kerbal on the moon and everything. The margins are much tighter on all of this because of the use of kerosene and oxygen. There won't be any hovering for a minute or any of that business. Oh, I've got the throttle up. That might be helpful. One of the things uh, KOS would have not forgotten if it had worked. So I had intended to make this video a lot earlier, but I got caught up in the Apollo stuff, so... And also, there were some updates to this mod that uh, I decided to make sure to get properly. Hopefully I've gotten it all right. So what I'm aiming for for the time to lap laps, this is about two minutes. That's what we'll leave the third stage with. And we should probably go to about a 15 degree pitch. Crawl down. We're a little bit higher than the Apollo mission right now. Not a whole lot, though. During the third stage, we can go down somewhat. And that'll be fine. But you can see we've sort of hurt our relative inclination by going to 51 degrees. Okay, getting ready for hot staging. And hot staging. And staging. Okay. So we'll lose some ground as this picks up. I'll keep it to a to 10 degree pitch. And uh, you can see uh, we have 5,200 meters per second there, 3,200 in our stage. That adds up to 8,400. Now orbital velocity is only 7,800, so we have about five, uh, five 600 to spare. 
and I haven't even crawled up yet. So, yeah, plenty of margin. And that's why I don't mind carrying up the launch escape system and everything all the way. When would they have dumped it? Who knows? They never got to that part. Probably very late, as the staging indicates, after the third stage ignition. I'm gonna increase the heading now. We've reached our uh, target inclination. 30 degree relative inclination with the moon right now. We'll see how painful that makes the transfer. And I would like to actually go down a bit from our current altitude. There's no point uh, having this stage hang out. These do not reignite. They only add one ignition. So even though we have the extra delta V, we can't use it. I think the upgrade version of this engine does have more than one ignition. I'm going to stop that vertical speed now. And again, if you want a circular orbit, you need that vertical speed to be close to zero by the time we finish this burn. So the numbers you need to be looking at, vertical speed, and also remember if we're hot staging, the stage time is super important now. Gotta be able to see when you're like a few seconds away from that. Okay, I'm gonna keep that. And that's good enough. 231 by 178. And that leaves us in a good position. So let me turn that off. I'll stage off the launch escape system now. get rid of these superfluous fairings and then uh, activate the thrusters on block G so you can see the thrusters here as well as the staging so let's do that okay um, they do have the forward ones important for the ullage of course selling the fuel down and there is our spacecraft very longish and the delta v in the block g for transfer to the moon is 3298 which under any normal circumstance should be enough burn time a little bit longer than you would expect from from the s4b from the saturn 5. now our current situation is not great as far as so timing wise this is not the time they would have launched <laughs> this is not the day they would have launched um when would they have launched? Well, when the moon was around here-ish, actually, would be good. So, you're going to have to find a better day. Let's see what happens if uh, if we go there right now. There's a few possibilities, of course. The most common is the off-plane transfer, and we're going to delay until the moon gets there. The problem is we have limited food and water and oxygen. So, the off-plane transfer to delay means that we might run out of those supplies. The mid-course adjustment means we have to take uh, one of the block D ignitions and still it might be dicey. But here we've got a 10 day thing and it isn't even close to the moon just yet. We could fiddle around with it but Given the fact that we are currently carrying 12 days worth of food, water, and oxygen, that's enough to get there, but not back. So, we need some other sort of deal where we meet up with the moon a little bit earlier. And that's not so easy. So this is not one of those normal circumstances where the 3,000 is going to be enough. So let me clarify, you don't want to do this. 
<laughs> this is this is not the right thing to do. It's possible. Um, I'll have to tweak it quite a lot more to get there. I'm sort of curious at this stage. Uh, I want to see whether I can get away with it. So what I would recommend doing is just waiting until the moon gets to the right location where your transfer is going to end up hitting it at the ascending or descending node in a good amount of time instead of 10 days. And not doing a mid-course adjustment of 580 meters per second, of course. That is way off. And I doubt the block D, which is the engine we would have to use for that, has enough margin for that. Well, this turned out to be more of an experiment. Okay. Um, all right, I'll try this. If it doesn't uh, end up looking good at the numbers, I'll, I'll launch it again without recording that and uh, we'll get a proper transfer instead. But let's do this one and see what numbers we end up with. The problem is right now the block D is carrying both the spacecraft and the lander. So it's a little bit tough for me to tell. I don't think it's going to end up with enough, but I would be very surprised. But let's see. Got to come out of warp at uh, six minutes beforehand, have it turn to the node, and probably ignition is about five minutes beforehand. There's actually a fair amount of delta V in uh, with the RCS in here, so that's good for fine-tuning the end of the burn if it turns out that uh, it overburned or underburned that RCS can be used to fix that at this point I should probably also pay attention to the fuel cell I think it's automatically activated I think it's already activated Otherwise, we have less electric charge. Okay, selling the fuel down. We see the icon and ignition. This only has one ignition, so no do overs. All the plume goes away during 2x time warp. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. And I'm going to use the RCS on this stage to finish that off. Uh, okay, I'm getting tired of this separation. Might need to be careful about that. Okay, let's just head to the next maneuver and see what happens. Right now it's indicating a crash course, which is fine, you know. Okay, well, let's find out. It doesn't ditch the fairings around all this stuff until they're good and ready to uh, move into the lander. There are other problems with this. Of course, we still are arriving a little bit late to try and make it back in 12 days. We've got our encounter in 6 days and 16 hours, so not the best timing. Okay, there comes our orbit. And stop. Okay. A little bit of RCS help. I'm not going to adjust the uh, orbit even though it's inclined like this. The flatter it is, the easier it is to break out of it. Okay. It would be sort of helpful if we like ditched the panels right now just for Delta V reasons, but I'll keep them. I'll try and make it a, a real test. Though I think we're probably short of Delta V. Again, it's just really hard to tell because we're still carrying everything. So then the panels go off. And we have to be careful because the way the spacecraft up there decouples from the lander is uh, 
by an undocking, not by a staging. Okay, that should be good enough. Very stable. And ignition. The whole stage has everything built in. That makes things a little bit more complicated. Oh wait, these verniers are separate. See, I knew I would miss a part. These block D verniers are a separate part with separate ignitions. Great. <laughs> the, the main engine is part of the whole deal, as is the RCS, but... But not those little verniers. Ah, I started this burn a little bit late. Okay, I wanted a slightly lopsided orbit for reasons. Anyway, that might help with the landing a little bit. But we are going to separate the panels now. Off that stuff goes. And then I'll have Val do the EVA and head in there. EVA is a little bit easier with the jetpack and everything. Oh, okay, grab that then. All right. She's in, and so we go here, and I just want to make absolutely sure that the couple node is what I want. I believe so. Okay, so Jeb is up there with that spacecraft. We don't want any of those panels, and here is this. Okay, uh, make sure we, well, we probably don't want, no. Activating the RCS on here, I don't know. 1,763 is rough. That's pretty darn rough for a landing. Let's see where we are. And of course, we have just two ignitions. So this is going to have to be some sort of suicide burn sort of situation. I would actually like to do this burn with just the verniers, if possible. because it'll allow me to finely tune the orbit a little bit better. Otherwise, you know, it's like a one second burn or something like that. We're only planning to use one more ignition from the main engine here, anyway. Let's have MechJeb landing guidance for the heck of it. Just to give me some more numbers on the time except for that suicide burn countdown. Okay, now we have a plan here. Two minutes. Now, obviously, normally you would uh, you'd wait a little bit, and it'll be a very patient sort of thing. But I think I'm going to activate everything right now, so that we have it all ready. It's got to be a tight margin sort of deal. Very important, transfer the food, water, and oxygen from this to the to the Soyuz after you're done so that you have enough to get back. <laughs> Again, all I had to do was wait a few more days for the moon to get into a better position. God, the landscape looks horrible. I mean, bumpy, not just the resolution. I've already staged the RCS up here. I'm just going to bundle that in with that stage. Speed things along. Okay. Oh, this looks bumpy as all heck. But let's begin. Settling the fuel down. Watch the suicide burn countdown, the vertical speed. Make sure nothing is going too horrible there. Pitch up if necessary. Looking pretty good right now. So again, you're using the block D to do most of this. basically going to be brought to a standstill here by it. And 
let's not have it do too much. Okay, separation, separation. And let me make sure when I double did that, that then, okay, ignition. All right, so we've got everything prepared. Let's sidestep a bit, if possible. I don't know if we've actually done that or not. I think I'll manually control it from now on so that I can tilt it away. Now these throttle and let's go. I'll go this way. Of course, starting too early means that you're going to use extra fuel, so watch out. And again, we're using the fuel from here, or we ought to be. Hmm. And it seems like fuel prioritization is not right. So watch out for that. Uh, that should have a higher fuel flow priority than this one does. Right now, this one is set higher. That's not right. So we'll transfer fuel to compensate. Well, I mean, initially we'll be lifting these off the ground too. We'll eject them at a certain height. Okay, and actually had uh, retro rockets to plant it into the ground. Just in case there was a heavy slope. And I believe that's... Uh, okay... Well, no, that was the backup engine. I forget which uh, action group does the retro rockets to uh, here um, activate engine. Those. <laughs> I forget which action group actually does that, but I like to shut this one down. Those are the backup engines. So what we have here is this is the verniers, this is the main uh, 858, and then these are the backups, the 859s that we're not going to use. Okay, uh, RCS can be off. So, yeah. Just so that they could land on a rough slope, they had those retro rockets, which you can see there. All right, Valentina. Let's see that the ladder works properly and everything. Take surface sample. Keep. We're not in science mode, but okay. Plant flag. Okay. Bow with the N1. Better late than never. Indeed. So now, rendezvous. Lunar Orbit Rendezvous. So even with the humongous 500 meter per second correction that we did... Oh god. <laughs> I don't know if the retro rockets are good enough. Uh, the thing jostled when Valentina tried to get back in. Even with that huge correction, we still managed to make a landing, and I expect that we have enough to uh, make the rendezvous. Uh, let's wait a little bit so that it comes around again. Right now wouldn't be the best time. So we'll have it be right behind us. Uh, maybe a little bit further. After all, we'll be in a lower orbit and catching up. Okay, so as I said, let's... Oh, that all that fuel is done. Okay good times. So all we have to do is make sure that we know the heading to target. It's the opposite of that. It's uh, behind us right now. And I think we were going prograde around the moon, oddly enough. Doesn't matter too much in terms of delta V. But uh, yeah, so we'll be headed 180 minus that, which is mind blank 74.5, hopefully. Okay, RCS on and up. And drop the line points. And 
it looks like it needs about four minutes of burn time, which is not much, so we don't need a whole lot of time to lap laps this, but we do need to be clear of obstacles. Now again, we have quite a few ignitions with this, ten more. And we have the throttling. So it's a pretty good deal. Let's see how much it throttles. Uh, it's about to 50% or so. So not as deep as the lunar module descent engine. So be aware of that. In fact, I am going to throttle down now. And that's partly because since we're in a lower orbit, I, I really want the other mission, the Soyuz, to go past. Right now, that's not happening. Well, I might have to end up going higher than the target. Okay, nope, oh, I think I missed the closest approach that I wanted. Um... This doesn't have backward-facing thrusters, so it's a limit to what we can do there. I went past, but maybe too far past? I think. Let me see. Uh, yeah, there seems to be something shaping up over there. Oh, too much, too much. That's better. Okay, well, so let's turn around and retro about 10 meters per second. We still got 667 meters per second, which is plenty for a rendezvous. And this does most of the rendezvous business except for the final docking. The Soyuz just has enough fuel to get back, so. Be aware of that. Okay, we'll start off with this 11 kilometer situation. Oh, I used a lot of ignitions just now. I should just push it into the, uh, the um, render range now. I accidentally double clutched on the, on the ignitions because I'm using a throttle instead of a button. Okay, we're just forcing the issue because we have a lot of delta V now. See, so much margin. I said at the beginning that it wasn't much margin, and now I've got all the margin in the world. I swear to craft file, all, all the parts have been edited, so now I've got way more margin than I used to have. Earlier versions of this mod seem to be a bit stingier, I think. Still a lot of Delta V. All right. Uh, well, at this point, we should manage things from uh, Jeb's point of view. Oh, this still has the RCS issue. I thought by um, by updating it, they wouldn't have that. So, yeah, I think the I, I I did update the mod, so this is weird, but that should be fixed momentarily. Uh, basically, the RCS on that. The send module is currently non-functional, so expect that if you see this problem. Okay, that's very good. So target negative parallel here, point towards the target, and just hold that. Yeah, just turn off SAS on. And we are approaching. Note the 970 meters per second we have there. That's what we have to get back. So again, ignore the thrusters firing here. That's all messed up. And uh, we'll see how that works on re-entry. It should turn itself to the proper orientation, of course. But that's, that's the word should there. So in this on its own, we have, uh, I think it's the lander that has the two days. 
And this has the other six days. I'm not sure though. Okay, we have docked. That was mercifully not complicated. And then transfer the food, water, and oxygen. Well, let's transfer Valentina first. Don't want to empty it of oxygen before we transfer Valentina. Oh, grab. And board. Okay, so right under the parachute. All right. Yeah, there's a crew hatch there. Let's make sure both our crew members are in there. Yeah. Okay. So that's nominal. Technically, I could transfer fuel from here too, but I won't do that. I'll be, I'll be good. Okay, so no more food, no more oxygen. There is water here. But we're full up on water here. And full up on water here. That's probably because of the fuel cells. All right, so that can undock. We can get away from it. And we're set to go back. Now, can our 970 work for this? despite our weird inclined orbit. Let's find out. The inclined orbits make it so that you get this horrible polar sort of situation. And we want to get there, you know, in good time too. Okay, it looks like that's the way to go. Okay, that will do, and we seem to have enough for that. And it'll be good time. Uh, well, the water says two days, but then we've got the fuel cell running, so that should be more than two days. And it's how many days back? Three days. I think they can survive for a day without water, incidentally. But I don't think it'll be necessary. The margin on the return vehicle is, of course, completely unaffected by the rest of the mission because all we've done with it is dock. Burn time, 4 minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, probably should have started a little bit earlier. Oh, I'm nervous about the staging. Okay. Probably not too far off since we're not using the full stage time. Okay, let's see what's really going on here. Oh, that's pretty good. 59, 59 seems good. However, we have the problem where we don't have RCS functional on the descent module, so I'm gonna, well, I don't wanna kill them. Let's go with 55 and see if that works out for us. Okay, back we go. I should probably start that CO2 scrubber, shouldn't I? Now, whereabouts would that be? You know, we have potassium superoxide. But honestly, I don't see where the scrubber is that uses it. <laughs> nope. So I don't have anything that uses potassium superoxide? Hmm. Oh well. Good thing tag light support doesn't kill them for the CO2 situation. Okay, so we've got the situation where the descent module RCS is suspect. Normally, what I do is go normal and separate the two modules off, which would be safer. Instead, I'm going to go retrograde so that the descent module is properly oriented from the, in the first place. And actually, maybe surface negative relative loss, uh, surface negative velocity there, and separate it like this. I don't know, we could crash into the service module, but hey, that wouldn't be the newest thing to have ever happened. Okay, and uh, actually I'll wait a little bit longer. 
All right, I think uh, to get proper distance between the service module and the send module, I should set now. So set. Hopefully it's knocked a little bit away. Oh god, it's got some residual turn to it. Well, it's, it's certainly, the RCS is certainly not functioning right now. So we're going to rely on it orienting properly. I'll turn descent mode on. We'll have to figure on that. Well, we don't seem to have to worry about the covers on this one. Maybe that's a different version. Well, it's turning all over the place. Okay, well, let's hope it turns back around. Oh, looking good, looking good. Probably was supposed to deploy some in that antenna at some point. Uh, I get the feeling this is going to be a bit rough. I don't really want to go around, but we have enough electric charge actually. And if we do have to go around for a second pass, we can do that, it looks like. Hopefully the version that you get will have the RCS fixed though and you can control it. And again, um, typically I would keep roll zero here. And then once we get close to the periapsis, which should be more like 60 kilometers, I turn roll 180 to hang out at that level. And then once it was clear that I had a re-entry situation, in other words, it's not going to go back up again, I'd flip back around to roll zero. They normally manage the roll based on where they wanted to splash down, so it was more particular than that. Well, we seem to be sort of sideways, which is halfway between the two. G-forces will get pretty high. But I think we're going to come straight down. Really, RCS is just a bonus on this thing. All right, here comes all that G-Force. I did turn on the Kerbal G-Force limits. Will I regret that? I mean, of course, they'll just pass out. And again, that's that's because we're not managing it, then we should probably be pitched a rolled the other way right now. Would be really good. Would have been for the best. This is not the orientation we should have. Hopefully, uh, they'll wake up before I have to deploy the parachute. Because... I didn't arm it ahead of time. I don't know, can I arm the parachute right now? Let, let me take a look at the info on the parachute. This has gotten me before. By default, it's set to a pre-deploy altitude of 25k. Don't do that, obviously. So maybe arming the parachute, bad idea. Don't arm the parachute unless you've tweaked that back down. Oops, sorry, interrupted by a phone call there. And basically what I was saying was, yeah, watch out for that parachute. And um, I guess I can arm it now. And it'll just automatically pop up. There we go. Here it's about it's safe enough. Okay, let's see that everything else works out. Don't know if we have to decouple the heat shield. Um, I don't think this has those retro thrusters that Soyuz has. And of course we've got the additional flaw that we're splashing down. If you can help it, of course, I guess it would land on land rather than over water. But that's a bit of trajectory finagling that I am not going to be able to cover. 
That was dramatic. Okay, that brings us to 7.1 meters per second. So again, I thought this RCS uh, situation was supposed to be fixed. That's why I had updated the mod. Uh, maybe I did something wrong with the update, so I'll have to check on that. In any case, it's not, um, it's just unfortunate looking. It is not going to hurt the success of the mission. The G-forces are a bit rough. What did we reach on that? 15.5. Well, Cosmos would definitely argue that they could handle that. So anyway, they're back. We can recover. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.